Okay, so we have a spreadsheet that has gathered student questions and answers for a multiple choice quiz. And what I'm going to show you in this video is how to take this spreadsheet and turn it back around into a Google form that's a quiz that you can send out to students. To do that, we're going to use a Chrome extension called Form Builder for Sheets. Form Builder for Sheets. Um, and I'm just going to really quickly show you how to install that if you're not real comfortable with um, uh, Chrome extensions. So I'm just going to look at search for Form Builder for Sheets. I've already searched for it, so it's in there. Um, this one down here beneath the ads is part of the Google Workspace. Um, and so if I click on that, this is the one that um, will allow me to like get this extension. If I didn't have it installed already, um, I would, uh, you know, it wouldn't say uninstall, it would say install there. Um, anytime you're installing an extension, you are taking on the risk associated with that. So I caution you to be really confident that you're doing something that you're comfortable with. Um, as I said in an earlier video, I actually have a, a dummy account that I use instead of my regular Gmail for extensions like this that have the ability to um, overwrite and delete and add things to my drive folder. That way it's sort of sequestered in just a small piece of it. It only has access to the things that it needs to. I will say Form Builder has less scary permissions than Autocrat if you are looking at those. So whatever you feel comfortable with, but that's, that's your choice to make how you want to use these things. Um, it is pretty simple to use, so let's hop in here and look at it. So remember, we've got um, information on our students. Uh, we have the questions that they added in, their answer choices, and then which answer is correct. That's actually not going to be important for here because I haven't found a way to use Form Builder to automatically preload uh, correct answers. Um, I have to do that by hand, but it, it shouldn't be too terrible to do. Um, so I'm going to go to Extensions. And I'm going to say uh, Form Builder for Sheets and Start, right? So that's in that Extensions menu. If it doesn't show up, head on over to Add-ons and say Get Add-on, and you should be able to access it from there. But once you've installed it, it should be there. If it's not, hit Refresh, and that'll probably put it in there for you. And then it's just a matter of starting it. So uh, the first thing it asks asks us is to choose the source sheet. We're on form responses one. Um, in the other video about Autocrat, I made some copies of it. If you want to do that just as a like making sure you have a clean copy of your data, all you do is you click on this little arrow down here and say uh, duplicate and it'll spawn as many copies as you are comfortable with down there. Um, so I am on the form that, or I am on the sheet that I want to be on, form responses one. I don't need the whole, I don't need the full sheet. I just need a range. And my data starts at D2. That's where the question is. And it goes to, um, actually, it's going to go past this. I need this question type one for uh, form builder. So I'm going to make sure it says J there. So I'm going to say it goes from... D2 to J, and I'm just going to throw 100 in there. Select pattern. Oh, I haven't tried quiz. It says it's in beta, so anything could happen there. Maybe that would allow you to put a correct answer in there. I'm just going to pick questions and answers for now. If you're feeling frisky, go for quiz. See what happens. I can check this box if I started at D1 instead of D2 and included headers. Um, I'm not going to, though, because I, I excluded headers already. Question at column. That's asking which of these columns my questions are in. And my questions are in D. So I'm just going to click on here and say D. Type at column. Confusing, right? What does that mean? It's got this little question mark help on here. If you click on this, it tells you a supported list of field types. So these are all the kinds of questions that you can have um, in Form Builder, which is pretty cool. You can include some um, paragraph questions, drop down menu. That would be a fine option for multiple choice. The kids would click on it and select one of the options instead of seeing those radio buttons and A, B, C, D. Actually, those 
Those letters I don't think will show up in the form. Instead of seeing the answers with radio buttons, they could do a drop down menu. It's up to you. However, you will notice that um, it can be one of the following case insensitive, meaning you don't have to put it in all caps if you don't want to. Generally, when I'm picking from a list where I know if I type something like slightly incorrectly as I am want to do, it'll mess everything up. I'm going to copy and paste from their list. So I'm just going to highlight Command C, uh, Control C if you're on a PC, and then we're going to go on over here to question type. And I'm just going to fill that in, drag it down for any of the questions that I have. You are more than welcome to continue the work that your students have started and put in your own questions after this. Like if you wanted to throw in three or four multiple, or sorry, three or four paragraph kind of questions, um, you could do that and then just pick paragraphs. So you can take what they started, put in your own stuff, um, and make it kind of like a hybrid teacher and student quiz. Up to you, whatever you want to do. So now I need to tell it that my type is at column J. And again, I apologize for this being so tiny, but um, I, I like seeing the whole thing there. I hope that's okay. Excuse me. I'm not going to have a description. My answer is going to start at column E, and my answers will end at column H. So that's just saying, where can I find answers from? Required at column, that would be if you wanted to put it over column, I think. I haven't tried it, so I think it would be where if you had a column and you would put like yes or no for whether a question was required. Add other at column, so if you wanted the option for students to type in an answer in addition to being able to choose something. I don't, so I'm leaving that blank as well. Delimiter uh, would be if instead of having four different columns for your answer choices, they were all in there separated by something like a comma or a space or something like that. Uh, not how we have our setup, but if you had your students enter in all of the answers separated by a semicolon or something, you could check that box and make sure your delimiter matched whatever your students were doing for their answers. Go to go ahead and click Get. And it pulled in, it's identified three questions, which is exactly the number I have. If I read through and I knew there were duplicates, I could uncheck some of these boxes and say like, okay, I only want those questions. You can select just parts of them from here. Um, another way to do that would be to just delete them from your spreadsheet. Uh, it's, it's entirely your choice what to do. So I can either choose an existing form or create a new form. I'm going to start by creating a new form and I'm going to call it November I'm just giving it a name because I've I've tested this a few times now and so I'm wanting to make sure it's something new check mark to create now I can go to this quiz and just see right now it is a blank form um, and the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to put in a name option and a period option. Again, whatever you want to have in here. If you want to collect the kids' emails, if there's something important, that's fine. Um, one of the nice things about having periods in here, and I'm like way off on a tangent, so if you want to skip ahead to the next chapter in here, please do. Um, you can make this be a uh, go to section based on answer. I did this when I was teaching seventh and eighth grade. Um, I would use the same forms, like let's say I was setting up a quiz like this, but I would select seventh grade questions for the seventh grade quiz, eighth grade questions for the eighth grade quiz, and I would tie it to what class period you were in, right? Because I didn't have any mixed seventh and eighth grade class periods, thank goodness. So if you're in one of my seventh grade class periods, it's only going to show you the seventh grade quiz. If you're in one of the eighth grade classes, it's only going to show you the eighth grade quiz. An option, not necessarily something you need to do. If you want me to do a tutorial on that, just let me know and I can get one in here. So the other thing you can do now is you can make this be a quiz. Okay. Release grades immediately after each submission is not going to work the way that I think it does. This one kind of annoyed me, and I'll get in more to that later. Um, do you want your students to see which questions they answered incorrectly? Do you want to see which ones they answered correctly? Do you want them to see point values? 
what's the default question point value? So let's say I want one point for every question. Um, this one deals with whether you're collecting email addresses or not. If you want to limit your students to one response, it means they have to have a Gmail account and be signed into it. Um, otherwise, Google doesn't know if they're entering the same thing multiple times. I usually leave most of these things off. Um, there's just, there's COPPA issues with it if your kids are under 13. It's just, yeah. I usually leave it off and just have them use their names as an identifier. Um, I'm not going to worry about these form and question defaults here, but because I've turned this into a quiz and assigned point values, if I go back to my questions, you now see that name uh, and period are worth one point, and I can't do anything about this right now. This was really frustrating until I realized I just need to reload my quiz. And now I can go to answer key and say your name is worth zero points. Um, and I can go to period and say that's also worth zero points. You can leave it at one, but I'm not sure how you can get it so that it just automatically gives everyone a point for entering their name. On here, I can see how you would do that. So if I had this worth one point, and I would say these are all correct answers, then kids would get the point. I don't, you you can't set it up so that you're actually checking to make sure that Susie has said that she was in period three if she was really in period three. So, I mean, you're gonna get a kid who clicks the wrong thing, it gets awarded a point for being in the wrong class. I don't know, not a big deal. Um, I digress. So. Let's get back to it. We've got the name, we've got the class period. Let's put our questions in here. I've got all three of them selected. Again, you can choose a different number of them. You could choose a subset. You've got some options down here. Overwrite form content is going to delete, I think, I haven't tried it. I think it would delete the name and period that I put in there. Shuffle question order could be fun to do. It would just mean they wouldn't be in the uh, order that they were printed in. And then we're making our options multiple choice. Make selected questions required. So if you click this button, it means that it won't let the students submit the quiz unless they've given an answer for every option on there. I like that option, but you know, your mileage may vary. Now that I've got my things set up in these advanced features down here, I'm gonna say import selected going to give me the little spinny wheel and then it's telling me it's successful. I can go right to the form from here or I can go back over to my form and see these answers here. Now for some reason it did not remember that I wanted them to be one point. Kind of annoying but I had to go in here and tell it the right answer anyway. All these things are cool about crabs. Answer key mitochondria is about energy. Make it a point. The bone are what oh didn't click answer key there we go so if you've never done google quizzes they're kind of cool to do um, you can certainly do it much easier just by writing your own quiz and sending it out i would recommend playing around with that first before trying it this way with student answers just to get a feel for it could be a, a low stakes fun thing where you just have the students put in some um, like basic information about themselves or something like that um, where you're not really doing that response validation, but just to get used to the idea of what your data looks like and those kind of things. If you want to um, give it a try, you can click preview. Kind of a misnomer because this is actually going to submit an answer to the quiz, but I would put in my name, what class period I'm in, and then I'd answer some questions. Okay, view score. It's going to show me what I got right and what I got wrong. So if you don't want your students to see their uh, what's correct and what's not, like if everyone's taking it in class together um, and you don't want them like turning their laptops to each other or whatever, Chromebooks, iPads, um, you can change it so they can't see their scores. And the way that you do that is going back to settings and say um, don't don't show missed questions, don't show correct answers, don't show point values. That means they won't know um, like that they got two out of three right. Um, so that's a little bit 
of a bummer. I really wanted an option where it would just tell them their score without telling them, without tying it to answer choices, but I don't see how that's an option in here. So now if I go to take the quiz, uh, let's do, oh, I can't not click all of the above. Okay, view accuracy, and it just shows me what my answers were. It doesn't actually tell me anything. So I don't know why they call that view accuracy. A little bit irritating, but what are you gonna do? So that is how you set these things up. To share it with students, you can either send it to a list of their emails or you can send a link. If you have a website, um, you can use this embed code. And so just have it on your, your page. Um, so there's a bunch of options there. I really like Google Forms, and this is kind of a cool way where you can use a Google Form to get student questions, play around with it a bit, and then send that same quiz back to them, making sure everything's reasonably accurate. Um, I hope that that's helpful. Let me know if there's anything that was confusing or that I went through too fast, and I'm happy to redo that part, if not the whole thing.